All right. I think you guys can hear me now. All right. Got, we've got my close-up tabletop camera so you guys can see here. All right. Okay. Sorry about that. So starting from the top, welcome to a second week of the Dive Soft Gear Talks Live, a show where we bring to you our tools and equipment. At more in depth on our equipment and to ask us any questions that you guys may have uh, relating to the gear. So that'll kind of keep us on topic, right? And so um, a couple of things. I want to make sure that everybody likes and shares our the videos and then everyone can submit a question. I've got Matej in the, in the background behind the scenes. He's going to be um, kind of going through the questions and he'll put them in on our feed so I can see them. Um, also, if you guys tuned in to our episode of Dive Talks last week, uh, I had Michael Mind and he offered a, um, a free issue of Aquacore magazine. Uh, there were some delays last week, but now it's available now. All right. So, hope everyone's doing good. Uh, the what we're going to talk about today, what I have kind of here in our cases, is our analyzers and kind of the different kits that they come into. I have this simple, super simple, basic analyzer, and then I have my Set Blender Max Pro. Um, also, another cool thing that we're going to go over today is our flow limiters. Uh, we do get a lot of questions about these guys. Hopefully, you can see a little bit better there on the camera. Um, I do get a lot of questions about them, and we have some really interesting tools that I want to show you guys that will be really great for fill stations and just a, a really good tool to use for an, analyzing your cylinders and measuring the pressure that's in them. Uh, we want it to be a very easy, simple, and accurate process so that you're, you always know what, what you're breathing, right? So... Be sure to submit your questions. Uh, be sure to share and so that we can get lots of people viewing these videos. Uh, I also want to let everyone know that we've been uh, posting a lot of our live streams on our YouTube page. So be sure to go over to our YouTube page and check that out. There's a lot of videos on there as well that we make for you guys. Just kind of more informative videos. All right. So what do I have in front of me? I have our lineup of analyzers. And I'm going to be kind of bouncing forth between the two cameras so that you guys can see them all pretty well. I have our kind of our simple uh, Nitrox analyzer. So this guy is a really great tool that's used with your Freedom computer. And I'll, I'll be sure to go over that kind of first. And then next, I have here in this super secret case, I have the solo analyzer. Now this guy is real great for traveling and for being out in the field. That's that's what she was made for. So we'll dive in depth onto each of these, but I just want to introduce the lineup. And then what's this? This is another bigger case. I don't know how many of you guys have seen this guy. So this is our analyzer helium oxygen, but it's in a standalone case. So it's the set, it's the analyzer that you know and love with kind of a uh, a facelift. We released this in DEMA 2019. That's when we first started showing her off. It's still the aluminum body, but it's blacked out. But we sell it in a standalone case, and we do that because we haven't had we have had a significant amount of requests for the analyzer, just the analyzer. So it's kind of our uh, next step up from buying a solo. So what it comes with, it has a power charger. It has a lithium battery inside. It also 
has the capabilities for a 9 volt battery to go in the back as well got to make sure that I stay on camera and then we have all the adapters for all the places around the world so and then it comes with this simple flow flow limiter all right it just it just plugs into the top of it and I'll show you guys in a little bit how this guy works but this is the, this is what comes in the standalone case okay all right and then here now we get into our sets into our kits this is you can see my guys this is the this is the kit I take out in the kit in the field with me you can see it's got a little bit of love marks these pelican cases are so awesome they're super tough and robust and they've got a good o-ring on them so they're you're not going to get water inside of them so this is our set blender max this guy uh, part of the kit and this is kind of the the professional level uh, kit that has our H, uh, helium oxygen analyzer and within the kit you have an ohm reader you have a voltmeter complete with the power cables we'll kind of go over how to use that later and this is our simple flow limiter the way that this guy goes I'm gonna make sure that you can see it just gonna plugs in at the top and then I'll go up to the orifice of the cylinder and it'll create a seal and it will uh, that'll be the that's this simple way to analyze gas um, comes with a 9 volt battery and then this is another interesting toy that goes with the tubing as a flow restrictor this guy is designed to screw into an inflator head show you guys how to use that a little bit later um, we offer a series of, of kits so this is the set blender max all of the, the the two blender kits we either offer a set blender uh, a set blender um, a set blender and a set diver right so a set blender basic I'm sorry I forgot it so a set blender basic and a set blender max in the set blenders each come with this professional flow limiter. The, the, this is different than the uh, simple or the um, the basic, the flow limiter basic. Um, and I'll show you guys when we get into the uh, flow restrictors later. But that's kind of the differences between the set blender and the set diver are the flow limiters. Now the basic version versus the max version are the voltmeters and ohm readers you can have a set diver basic or a set diver max the max comes with the voltmeter and the ohm reader the basic does not come with the voltmeter or the ohm reader and we'll go over how to use these guys later but another very handy tool for canister lights batteries um, you know dpvs so very good tools for that comes with it so and then this is a tubing that comes with each of these kits now this tubing is a very very handy tool with any of the flow restrictors that you have um, it's kind of the most effective way of analyzing gas without with minimizing the amount of gas you lost I don't know if you guys have ever run into where you open up a valve on a cylinder and you end up losing a lot of gas using the flow restrictors and using this tubing is the most effective way to analyzing your gas All right now this is this is your kits so now we'll get into the basic operations actually I need to open this guy up again so need to get into the basic operations oh also you can see that we got our our analyzer got a facelift this is our older analyzer, kind of the original one that you know and love. It's got the blue aluminum uh, case versus the black uh, aluminum case. This guy, it's a it's a real classic retro look. I'm a big fan of it, but I really love our new blacked out look. Looks really really great. So and that's just kind of the differences. They're not different analyzers, there, but they're just it's just a different body. So now what we're going to get into is kind of the basic operations of the analyzer. 
So as you see kind of on here, it's pretty straightforward. There we go. We're on this uh, close screen. We have the basic buttons here. This little compartment here in the back is uh, where you would unscrew and you would put a 9 volt battery. We'll also get into how to change the sensors. So I want to make sure that you guys can see really well. So I make sure there's no glare. So I turn on my analyzer. The first thing that, so I'm holding down the, I'll turn it on. You can see the serial number, the hardware, firmware, and then you can see my battery charge. All right. So we have uh, different screens. There are different, different kind of home screens. Uh, you can hear that clicking sound. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can hear it on the microphone. But that clicking sound is the solid state helium sensor working. Now here we're on this kind of detailed screen. So this, what this will do is that it calls the gas. You see here that it's called air. You know, it's basically called what, you know, is commonly, commonly referred to gases rather than saying it's 21%. Now we can, now I have my PPO2 set to 1.6, which you can adjust that in the settings. And with the PPO2 of 1.6 with air, my maximum operating depth in salt water is 215 feet. With an END, with an equivalent narcotic depth of 100% of air, right? And then we have the date and I have the time here. So this is kind of one of the most informative screens. This screen is going to be kind of almost everything that I need for uh, properly labeling my cylinder. The only thing that I'm missing here is my gas pressure, which I'm going to show you guys how to do that a little bit later. So now I'm going to jump between different screens. Here I see my oxygen percentage and my helium percentage and the temperature. So we can see that oxygen is at 21.1, 21.0. So um, now, remember how we measure our oxygen. We Basically, we measure our oxygen off of an oxygen. We have an oxygen cell that is essentially, it's, it's a galvanic sensor that's uh, essentially a battery that reacts with oxygen percentages. So it creates, it exhibits a voltage. It's measured in millivolts. So the standard, this is why the gas is fluctuating, because I have to calibrate it because a certain millivoltage is kind of equal to the partial pressure of oxygen of 0.21. And so we'll get into the calibration steps in a moment. But just to kind of explain to you how the oxygen sensors, uh, why it's changing and why it's reacting. Now we have this basic super simple screen. Now this basic screen is just nice and clear. You can see it from far away. I can probably show it to the other camera and you might even be able to read it. But let's see, let's see, can we see it? Uh, kind of, but this screen is really nice. Uh, I can see it from far away. I can see it when the sunlight just beaming on it and it's nice and bright. So I've got Matt in the background. He's showing us kind of his screen. He's showing where on our uh, web page you can find the oxygen sensors and other different uh, products uh, with and a little bit of information about them. They're type 22S um, galvanic oxygen cells that are used in here. And then we'll get we'll jump into how to change them out and a little bit more about them in a moment. So. The basic operations to kind of jump or jump around. Uh, what do we have on here? So we have our keyboard, our screen. This is where we put uh, the you know an external nine volt battery, and then we have uh, we have the power supply and we have a USB connection. Um, the USB connection is predominantly used for uploading and downloading firmware. Here we have our connecting port for our voltmeter ohm reader. And also a very important piece that comes in the kits. So this is a toggle that goes on here that is designed to uh, put the analyzer into like an upgrade mode. So if you guys find these in your kits, it's not an extra piece that you should throw away and forget about. We get that quite often that people throw these away or they lose them because they never use them. 
and they end up being an important piece of equipment. I want to make sure you guys see it while I remember, right? So don't lose these, they're important. Now, our gas gets fed into this inlet port, and then this is the exhaust port. So you have the inlet feed in here, the gas goes through a chamber, which we'll go through later, we'll talk about later, and then goes through the oxygen sensor and it'll exhaust through here. All right. The, um, so it, that's kind of the external components of the analyzer. Now we have our button. So we're going to jump in a little bit. So I click my menu. Let's see. So we have the gas mix solver, the gas mix uh, simulator, continual analysis, trimix gas purity, ambient pressure, it does have a barometric pressure inside, preferences, set date and time, measurement units, and then you can reset to defaults. So kind of the scope of this video is just, we're just doing a very basic informative video. We do have other videos that dive into the continual gas analysis, the gas mix simulator, and the gas mix solver. Uh, that's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about today. Um, but if you guys do want to see more of those, we, uh, you know, send in some requests and we can jump into those. Uh, but we have made some videos on our YouTube page that dive into these things. So these are just different components of the analyzer. And so we can see now the buttons that we have. We have the menu button. You have the calibration functions. And then escape. If you click and then mode and then OK. So in order to select, um, you click OK. So we're going to select ambient pressure. Now we can see our ambient pressure. We're here in Largo, Florida. We're, we're, there's, there aren't many mountains here in Florida. So we're pretty low. We're kind of at sea level. But we, so we have our altitude and our pressure. So with a lot of analyzers, you have to compensate for your altitude. Uh, our uh, analyzer helium oxygen does that for you, you can see here. So now for me to go back, I push the escape button and then I can scroll up and I can hit the escape function and then I'm back. Now if I have if I have an analysis and I it keeps changing or the clicking keeps going, I can click, I'm sorry, I can click OK and you can hear it's quiet now. So it's basically holding this reading. Any times the, he, the he, HEO2, or the helium 0, 0.0 disappears, that means it's working, right? And so that means it's, it's analyzing. It hasn't produced, it doesn't have a known reading yet. So you need to wait until you have a known number here. Um, I do ha I have some gases here. I can show you kind of how it analyzes with those. You can hear uh, the pitch of the clicking actually changes. It's kind of funny. But if it's kind of clicking and loud, I can turn it off by pushing the OK. And then you can see it wakes back up. There we go. All right. So that's kind of the basic functions of the analyzer. Just kind of an introduction of the keyboard, what's everything, what is what in uh, here. So now we're going to get into the calibration mode. So in order to do the calibration, there's multi, there's three t kinds of calibration. So I'm going to go grab, I'm going to grab me a bottle that has air in it. So 0.21% in order to show you guys how to properly calibrate. So so I'm going to show you guys, and we're going to explain the one point, two point, and three point calibrations. So I'm going to get my professional flow limiter. Yes. We want to use our the best gear, right? So whenever we do a calibration, it's, kind of, it's a little hard to see. So I'm going to push, make sure the glare is there. Calibrate. I've got a one point calibration and I have a two point calibration and I have a three point calibration. So what do all these need? What do all these mean? What do I need? And what do I need? Right? And so 
single point calibration. I want to do a trimix dive, but I only have um, air with me. Or I, I want to do, um, I'm sorry, that was backwards. A single point calibration, it's in uh, what we use is we want to use air to uh, calibrate it. A, a two point calibration uses two mixes air and 100% oxygen. And then a three point calibration does, it, uh, you want to use. 0.21% air, you want to use 100% oxygen, and then you want to use a gas mix that contains no oxygen. Typically, we want to use a three-point calibration for a hypoxic dive. So that means that we have below 21% um, gas. So essentially, we're finding, we're finding reference points along a graph. Uh, we have a really good video on our YouTube page that describes the theory behind these different calibrations and why we do that. So we're going to do a single point calibration. So I need, I've got a bottle of air with me. So these these uh, flow limiters. Let me see if you guys can see these flow limiters. They use DIN and they screw into the valve. And then I use my tubing. Right, there we go. It's a little bit hard jumping from screen, screen camera to camera. So I'll I do a single point calibration. I haven't opened the valve yet, and I hit enter. So it's asking me 0.1, and it's set to 0.21. There we go. 0.21 or 21 percent air. I click OK. Now I see my millivolts. I'm going to open up the cylinder. Now what I want to do, you can see there may have been some gas in this tube, but what I want to do is I want to wait till those millivolts are not moving. Remember, it's a galvanic oxygen sensor that's reacting off of the oxygen percentage, uh, off of the oxygen. So I have my temperature there, I have my millivolts there, and I have my ambient pressure. So 10.7 millivolts is 0.21% oxygen. So I click OK. So now it knows that it's 21%. All right now, as oxygen sensors get old, or or if they're brand new, sometimes the millivolts change over time. Right? Uh, they become flow limited. That, or I'm sorry, um, they become limited in, in terms of like how much millivolts they can go through. Um, but um, since we're using this for gas analysis, I'm basically telling the sensor this is 21%, and then it, and it uh, so it knows that this is 21%. So now I'm going to show you guys the two point calibration. So since I have so many flow limiters here, let's screw this guy in. I feel like I'm, I'm on a cooking show. I got all my tables and plates and everything right here. So now back to the close screen. I got, I'm going to go to calibrate. Now I'm going to do a two point calibration. Make sure that this is shut off. Two point calibration. So I'm going to follow the instructions given. So two point calibration. I want, I'm going to calibrate point one with air. So I'm going to go to my air bottle, and then I'm going to click OK. Sorry about that glare, guys. I'm going to turn on the gas. Now I'm waiting for it to be stable. All right, looks pretty stable to me. Click OK. Now, point 0.2 is 100%. So I'm going to close that air bottle. Bleed it. Now I'm going to, let's see. So we can see here, I'm going to go to that, my oxygen bottle and then back to my close camera. I'm going to click 100%. Ooh, that glare is bad. 100%. I'm going to click OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm opening up the oxygen nice and slow, right? Because 
now oh. interesting we see that it's not reading so looks like there's an issue because now if I'm using oxygen what should be changing the millivolts should be changing so the, the so it looks like we know that there's no gas flowing because the millivolts are not changing it looks like the problem that we have here is that it's flow restricted so that's an that's an interesting thing right here so I need to make sure that my flow restrictor is open there we go and there we go there you go Johnny so so with our simple flow limiter we have to control the gas flow that goes into the analyzer this is a really good example so if it's not reading that means the flow can be shut off here and I'll show you guys when we get to it but the flow I, what the problem was is that I had the gas the flow shut off and so that was restricting the gas flow now you can see here on my analyzer that I've got 51.2 millivolts so the, the millivolts went up and that's calibrating for oxygen so now I click OK there we go so essentially what we did was we created two data points on the curve of the oxygen cell so oxygen cell this is what the millivolts should be at 21% and then this is what the millivolts should be at 100% now if we're using a hypoxic gas for a three-point calibration we need to use a gas that has no oxygen so it can either be a bottle of helium or a bottle of argon um, a little bit cheaper to have a bottle of argon around than it is to have a bottle of helium but both will work and so um, now that's only recommended for um, hypoxic diving or when you really 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 need a very very accurate mix um, a single point calibration is perfectly suitable for a trimix dive trimix analysis a two point calibration is very accurate and a three point is very very accurate all right so so this goes uh, so this is the calibration just kind of the steps on doing it so hopefully that can answer any uh, some questions that you guys may have um, we can take a moment right now to answer some questions uh, let's see if we can have Matt throw some up on the screen so that I can see and we can see what you guys have how long does the average 9 volt so it looks like Rebecca over there in California is asking how long the 9 volt battery lasts well I've never had to change out a 9 volt uh, in the time that I've been using these analyzers so I think that they're very effective uh, and, and they're very battery efficient uh, for our analyzer um, these have the lithium ion batteries and so I predominantly use that the power uh, usage that the analyzers use is not very much um, so it's very suitable to keep it in the field and keep it in uh, you know keep a good charge on it so I'll use it every day and I'll probably charge it once every couple weeks so the prices are on our website um, so I can you guys can either take a look or I can you know glance for you guys but uh, our uh, kits uh, I believe our set blender max pro
All right, everybody. It sounds like uh, we lost the audio feed, which, sorry about that. That happens. I'm going to keep this screen a little bit more entertaining. So what Jacob was going was uh, speaking about, what my colleague was talking about on uh, the video was basically the differences between our uh, two analyzers, our solo and the set blender, uh, I'm sorry, the analyzer, the HEO2 analyzer. So the two main differences, what I always tell everyone, is that our solo is for the diver in the field. It's got a injected plastic housing, so it's much lighter. It's easier to change our uh, the oxygen sensor here. It's just a screw in the back. The top pops off, and then you have your sensor uh, sitting right behind there. And then, uh, but in inside the internals, the electronics are the same in terms of software and firmware. What our main uh, analyzer, helium oxygen, has is that it can be the voltmeter and the ohm reader, and it, and it has a different capability. So this is more suited for a fill station, a, uh, a dive shop, a diving professional, um, and, and also it's got a more robust housing. Now this injected plastic is not is not fragile, but it's definitely not as strong as this aluminum body. I'll go to I've seen shops where they, it looks like they they dropped it on rocks, and it's got a bunch of dents in it, but it's completely fine. It has no impact on the functionality of the unit. But we wanted to create a lighter uh, version and a more af uh, affordable version for the uh, technical diver that wants to have their own analyzer that will even be able to grow with them that they can have and use. And it's also fully capable uh, analyzer with all of our tools, our uh, flow limiters. Uh, we can use the tubing, pro uh, no problem. It also has a USB-C uh, C connection that's super commonplace um, for power for charging. And that's kind of the general differences between the two. Uh, so now I do recommend you guys go on YouTube and you take a look at that video. I know it was lagging and the audio wasn't very good here, but take a look at that video. And it's a, it's a really well produced video that kind of goes over the differences of what I talked about here. So. I know I kind of I'm kind of skipping around and jumping on the kids, but what I want to talk about here is our most simple gas analyzer. It is um, the kind of expansion piece from our Freedom computer. Looks like she went to sleep, so I'm going to turn on our computer. So this is our our DiveSoft Freedom computer. It's a computer that's completely upgradable from a basic version or a depth, a bottom depth, I'm sorry, a, a just a, a simple bottom timer version all the way to closed circuit rebreather. It's got different displays, it has a bunch of features. We're going to do a separate video on this guy. But what I wanted to show to you guys today that it has an expansion piece that you can use as a gas analyzer. So. I have my analyzer has uh, the same kind of fitting that it has for the charger with these threads and it has this super simple dongle. Now if I open up this dongle you see this is where we have our oxygen sensor in here. Very simple. It's you got to make sure I'm in camera and it screws in. So let's make sure let's see if we can blow up this uh, this video feed from uh, here there we go. So everyone can get a good view. You can see that it's very simple. So it screws in here. And then I'm going to screw him into the the computer. Just screws in there so it makes sure it's, uh, not to separate. And then now what I'm going to do, make sure that the camera can see it. This, I go into the settings. Now I have system check, I have applications. There we go. And then I have analyzer. All right. So I did a simple calibration right before the video. So 
I'm doing a calibration now. So this is 21%. I have the thermometer in here. So, and then the way that I'm going to analyze, I have my cylinder here. And I'm just going to hold it right up against the mouthpiece. And then I'm going to open it up. And the gas is going to flow. Now we should have 26% on here. 26.4, 0 0.5. All right, that's pretty good. So what now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Save. And I'm going to, right here, you can see Set as Open Circuit Mix. And then I can select the set, uh, which one I want. And there you go. So very simple analyzer that's really good if you have a Freedom computer. It's a very great add-on, a very cheap add-on that you can have. But it's one of my favorite Nitrox analyzers to use. And then now we have our Solo. So our Solo analyzer has the same firmware as our main uh, uh, HEO2 analyzer. And you can... So it looks the exact same in the kit. We have we have our simple flow limiter, and this piece works the same way. I'm just going to screw in right here on the outside, and it comes with a power charger. So this is a USB-C charger, just the way that we use the simple flow limit, simple flow limiter right here going to make a good seal and then open it nice and gentle. Now it's a little hard to see from the angle you guys got, but we're at about 26% oxygen. So that's essentially how so that's how our solo works with our set blender with our set with our simple flow limiter. But I can use the flow restrictors. I can use the tubing as well. Um, I prefer to use the tubing because it's the easiest uh, way of analyzing gas without using a lot of gas. All right. So I'm going to make sure to keep this in here. I like to keep everything in the case, right? So now we have our... What comes as a part of our Set Blender Max kit? Our Set Blender Max kit, the components that comes with it is our professional flow, flow limiter, and it has our voltmeter, and it has our ohm reader. The ohm reader is used to measure resistance in a power source. And so hopefully I'm getting that right. I'm not, I, I, to be 100% transparent, I'm, I don't use the ohm reader and the voltmeter very, very often. Um, so my experience is a little bit limited in it. But I do know that the ohm reader, basically you can detect if a cable has power or not. Now the voltmeter can be used to measure how much power is going kind of the voltage on it. It is limited, uh, and I believe it has a maximum volt reading of 40 volts. Um, but we do uh, we do have different videos on our YouTube page that kind of really dive into this and uh, really expand on these. Um, Adam from the videos does a very good job of explaining it, a little bit better than me. And so it also comes with a cable. So. A really quick little overview of how this guy works. So I'm going to turn the analyzer on. Make sure it's so it looks like we probably still have a little bit of gas, residual gas in there. I'm going to take my voltmeter. I'm going to go ahead and then screw it in the top. Now you can see here, there you go, max 40 volt AC DC. And here I'm going to take my cables.
Now, remember guys, positive is red, negative is black. So, I'm sure there's a couple hundred ways to always remember that, but I usually try to just flat out remember red and red, black and black, red positive, black negative. So, and then I'll go onto the contacts, and this is where I'll measure my charge. I think I have a canister light laying here. I'll show you guys a quick example. Let's see, it's uh, it's a little tall for this video, but maybe I can set it to where the camera sees a little bit. So I have the black here, and so, and then the red. So we can see on, if you can see on the analyzer, it's reading 12.3 volts. I take off the positive, I go to the other side, and it looks like 12.31 volts too. So it's a 15 volt battery, so that means that it's about 80-90%. So now I have an idea of how my battery is doing, uh, or in terms of like it needs to be charged or not. So, But that's a little bit of an introduction on how to use the voltmeter. The ohm reader operates the same way. It basically describes that there's a break in the connection. It's a, it measures resistance. So go ahead and I'm going to turn it off. And then I'm going to put away some of these cables. Try to keep it somewhat organized. So we have the ohm reader and then the voltmeter back in the case. Now what we're going to do is we're going to jump into uh, an exploded view. Uh, well, not really an exploded view, but we're going to go into the inner workings of the analyzer. Right here, we'll jump to this. So, this is the helium oxygen analyzer. I'm using the blue, this older blue one, just because it's a little bit easier to see with the contrast. Now, first things first. We have, in order to open up the analyzer to change the oxygen sensor, there are five screws that need to be removed. We have one that's a Phillips head up here on the top, and then I have two other Phillips head screws that hold the cover, and then I have two hex screws that kind of hold the body together uh, on kind of in this lower portion. But there's a total of five screws. Now. The, once you remove the screws, you need to separate the analyzer. So what, what I want you, when you separate it, it's, it's pretty fine. You want to be very careful, very gentle with it. Why do you want to be gentle? Because of these this screen connector right here. This is the connection for the keyboard. And then this is the connection. Let me make sure you guys can see. There we go the connection for the screen, this golden ribbon here. They are attached here on the motherboard. When you separate it, if you jerk it, you're going to break it. So take it very slowly, very gentle, and you can separate the cable, I'm sorry, the connectors from the motherboard. Once they're separated, you can lay it down, and then we can kind of show, there we go, that's a good, that's a good view. All right, thank God for that 1080p video. So we have here our main motherboard. We have our battery connection for the 9 volt. And then we have our oxygen sensor. So a lot of you guys, if you guys have had these analyzers for a long time, this um, we used to use an older cable. So if you have to buy a new oxygen sensor and you have one of the older cables, we'll send you a cable so that you can upgrade it. It's a very simple connection. It goes in, it's just, it's just a simple cable, you just separate it from the motherboard. Remember, positive in red, negative in black. You can see here, you can always make sure that you have the right connections. And the oxygen sensor screws in here into the gas block. So, this is our, our uh, simple gas block. 
that it has our inlet feed and it has our exhaust feed. We do offer another gas block that you can see here, the oxygen sensor, let me see if you can kind of see, there we go. The oxygen sensor screws in here, but then it has two inlet feeds. Right, it's actually, this one of them is an inlet and one of them is an output. And I'll show you guys when, uh, you can see these two ports here The, where the inlet goes straight into this port out here and it goes into the aluminum body. Why does it go into the aluminum body? Because it goes through the helium sensor. So the helium sensor is an integrated built-in component of the analyzer. We've got some pictures. There you go. You can see that labyrinth in there. That's on the other side of this motherboard. And so the labyrinth is how the the gas flows through this uh, flows. Through. Now, now that I removed the motherboard, I can show you guys. We have two speakers and two microphones. the The solid state helium sensor uh, works by um, by uh, emitting a microphone and a speaker. And so that's the clicking sound that we hear. And it, it measures the time it takes to go from the microphone to the speaker. Let's see if we can show some more pictures. Those pictures were really good. The, um, so it's measuring the time that the, that the clicks travel between the microphone and the speaker. And it goes back and forth. And that takes into account the, the gas flow. So it's not going to be a, a, a bad analysis going one way because it's traveling with the flow of gas. So it goes, it travels back and forth. So it's measuring the, 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 it's measuring the gas density based off of the speed of sound. Now there's a very good in-depth uh, kind of description of it all in our manual, which I can, uh, I can read it off to you guys, or you guys can read it. But, um, but the content is determined by measuring the speed of sound, the temperature of the mix, and the content of oxygen. When measuring the concentration of helium, it is therefore necessary to have the oxygen sensor ca correctly calibrated to know the oxygen content so that you have the, pro uh, the right analysis. The speed of sound is measured directly as the time it takes for an acoustic impulse, that's the clicking, to travel between the two microphones. This measurement is performed alternately in both directions to make sure it's possible to eliminate the influence of gas flow rate in the probe of the calculation. The acoustic impulses are heard as a weak click in the probe in the helium measuring mode. So kind of uh, kind of a generic analysis of uh, the solid state helium sensor. It's kind of a, a simplified version of it. Uh, explanation, simplified explanation of it. So we have our we have our motherboard here. You can see we have a uh, we have a pressure sensor here, and we have our nine volt battery connection. Whenever Installing and removing the, uh, this plate, we always want to make sure that we don't cut this cable or that it doesn't get in the way. What I like to do is I'll feed it around and I'll loop it so that it doesn't get kind of beat up or cut in the in the, the labyrinth. Now, like I always like to say. Um, changing your oxygen sensor is, is much easier. Uh, you typically don't have to ever remove the motherboard unless it has a problem, but at that point, you would send it to a certified technician um, in order to work on it. So, there we go. All right, and that's kind of the, the simplified inner workings of the analyzer. Um, and... Um, and yeah, that's kind of the internals of it, the, the little bit of uh, the guts. So we want to make sure our oxygen sensor is connected. Remember, positive red, black, uh, black negative. And then I'm going to make sure this guy goes in nice and gentle. Right? Now, it's going to be... Nice and clean. If there's any resistance, there's usually something maybe a little bit off center, off kilter. 
You should not use force on anything in here. If you're using force, you're likely cutting something or breaking something. All right. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to uh, kind of talk about, I know this is probably a little lagging, but we're going to get into the flow limiters. So what are the different versions of the flow limiters that we have? We have our uh, simple flow. Uh, it's, it's actually... We have several here. I'm going to bring the whole shebang here for you guys. We have our simple flow limiter. We have our basic flow limiter. Then we have our professional. And then we have some other add-ons that I'm going to talk to you guys about in a moment for all those gas blenders. So our simple flow limiter, what this what this guy has is it has uh, it's a gas block. Here we have uh, the flow limiter. You can see that it um, I had it closed all the way when I was analyzing the oxygen. But this this is what adjusts the flow rate, the proper flow rate for the analyzer. The flow rate that we're looking for is about two liters per minute, and we do offer a, a flow limiter or I'm sorry a flow meter here. That can plug into the tubing so that you can make sure that you always have the right flow. Now, this is our bleed screw. And then this port is another gas block that you um, can add on to it. And that kind of ties into what this piece is. So it dives off. We offer this, this new uh, M12 by 1 system. It's essentially uh, a a couple uh, it's a gas block that adds on to the flow limiter system you can see here you have the port that you remove this is where, uh, where you have the steel ball in here that you we never want to lose right but here we have the flow um, this uh, block that what this piece that you can purchase on our website that allows you to take a you know your typical um, SP and uh, your pressure gauge you can go ahead and you can screw it directly on. So if you have a pressure gauge that you only want to use, uh, that you want to keep it on the wall for measuring, uh, you know, tanks, it's just it's kind of in your hand uh, most often. You can use this block system, and you have your you still have your bleed screw here up here, but you can see there's two bleed screws now, so it's kind of redundant. But you can get your pressure while you're analyzing your mix. So this is the simple add-on that you can use to uh, mount this pressure gauge directly to your gas block. Now, if... We also have... So this is our professional flow limiter. We have this piece here. So we're, this is just an IP gauge, an intermediate pressure gauge, just a kind of an example. But it's the same thread that's used with this pressure gauge here. So this little block system, you can permanently screw and mount. So you can have the pressure gauge mounted directly onto the block system. So I mean that kind of removes this bleed screw here so it, it's a direct mounting so you can analyze your gas and you can relieve the gas pressure in the line as well now this is the professional flow uh, limiter this guy gives you uh, this guy has a regulator inside that gives you a constant uh, gives you the correct flow regardless of the pressure in the cylinder this guy if I've got a cylinder that's at um, you know 20 bar um, 700 PSI, I need to, um, I'm not sure if that's accurate, but you know, the, I need to adjust the flow rate. The regulator will adjust that flow rate automatically. So um, that's why it's handy for using, like you have a bunch of different cylinders at different, uh, with different pressures, it's going to compensate for it versus this guy I need to adjust it every time. But with these two pieces, with these pieces, I can um, add an SPG to my gas block system. Really handy if you, it's, it's really, really handy in general. 
and so uh, so that you don't have to screw in two different things. You can just screw in one thing here, and you'll get your analysis and you'll get your pressure. All right. So um, now uh, this would probably be a good place to break for any questions and see if any if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns. Now, we also, let me see, make sure that I'm not missing anything. We have the gas block system on that. And then, so, but we use the tubing for, uh, ah, here, I am missing something. So, what are these pieces? Now, if any of you guys have a Liberty Rebreather, you guys know that we love our caps. So, we have a lot of low pressure ca uh, hose caps. This hose, this low pressure hose cap, um, plugs in to the uh, low pressure hose, and you can plug this tubing directly in here, and then it can go to the analyze, and it can go to the analyzer, just from any low pressure hose that you have. Make sure that you guys can see it. Then we also have this connection piece that goes in here. That's for your inflator hose. So just an additional piece on here just to give you guys a lot of different tools uh, that you can use and for any multitude of scenarios, um, for gas blending, for trimix diving, gas analysis, uh, just to make it easier for you guys. All right. I hope I showed you guys enough stuff here today. I'm going to make sure that we're going to have a quiz at the end of this every week on the Gear Talks just to see how much you guys are paying attention. All right? No, just kidding. So. But anyways, um, always be sure to submit your questions uh, that on any of these talks. If you guys want to uh, talk on any particular topic, you know, more than uh, 